I love leftovers and I'm not the only one. In this 1960s cookbook called the I Hate To Cookbook, Peg Bracken wrote, well, some women can keep a leftover going like an eight day clock. Their Sunday's roast becomes Monday's hash, which becomes Tuesday's stuffed peppers, which eventually turn up as tamale pie and so on, until it disappears or daddy does. Well, we don't have daddy here, but we have Ashley, and we're gonna find out what happens when you can't count on leftovers. So Ashley's gonna show us how to make great mashed potato cakes from scratch. Yes, I am. <laughs> and we don't want to settle here because mashed potato cakes are traditionally made with leftover mashed potatoes. But the problem is you never know how much dairy or butter somebody used in that original recipe. So the potato cakes can turn out really loose or really gluey. So we found that the best way was to make the filling ourselves. We're control freaks, I love we it. We are. So these are two and a half pounds of russet potatoes, which we chose because we like the starchier texture and also they were a lot fluffier when they got mashed. And we peeled and had these lengthwise and then cut them into quarter inch slices. Okay. So I'm just gonna put these into the saucepan here and I'm gonna fill the saucepan with some water and you just wanna cover it by about one inch. That looks good. We have one tablespoon of salt, and this will help for seasoning the potatoes while they cook. Bring this water to a boil, reduce the heat to medium low, and simmer the potatoes until they're done, which will take about eight to 10 minutes. So we're not breaking any new ground here. We're boiling potatoes, right? Exactly. All right. All right, so it's been about eight minutes, and the way you know that the potatoes are done is that you insert this paring knife here, and if it meets no resistance, yeah. they're done. Tender, tender. Tender, tender. I'm gonna drain these, and I put them back into the saucepan. I'm gonna leave them here for about five minutes just to cool down a little bit, and also just to let any excess moisture evaporate off. Okay, so it's been about five minutes, and these seem to have cooled down a bit. Now it's time to add the flavorful ingredients to our mashed potatoes. First, I'm gonna start with one ounce of finely grated Parmesan cheese, which is about a half a cup. Cheesy mash, yay! Cheesy mash, one egg yolk. The Parmesan and the egg yolk are gonna act both as binders. We have a quarter cup of chopped fresh chives here, three quarter teaspoon salt, and one quarter teaspoon of pepper. And I'm gonna mash these all together in the saucepan. And you wanna do this until it's nice and smooth. But you'll notice I haven't put any milk or any butter in here. No, nothing. And that'll fry up better because it's more cohesive. All right, I'd say these look about right. I'm gonna move over here to this large bowl and just scrape out the mixture. And everything's really nicely incorporated. Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer this to the refrigerator just to let it completely cool for about one hour. All right, Bridget, so these have been in the refrigerator for one hour and they are nice and cool. We have two shallow pie plates and here we have two eggs and here we have two cups of panko breadcrumbs. Lightly beat these eggs here. This is gonna be our glue. And using this half cup measure, we are going to, and yes, I said we, divide this mashed potato cake filling into eight portions. And I was wondering, would you help I will. Okay. Are you going to show me one? I will. All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is form each patty three inches wide, and it's going to be three quarters of an inch thick in height. All right. So I'm going to just lightly put this in the egg coating here. You can use a fork. You don't have to use a fork. You can just use your old forks, your hands, if you'd prefer to. And let any excess drip off. All right. And then place it into the panko. I'm going to go for here. Thank you. Yes, that's great. And the only thing I would ask is just be sure not to forget about the sides because you want to make sure that all the sides get really nicely breaded there. All right. And then we have a large plate here that we can put all of our formed patties onto. Does that look good? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. <laughs> this isn't your first rodeo. I don't know. All right, we've got the last one. Great job. I'm just gonna leave these here on the counter for about five minutes, and the eggs and the breadcrumbs are gonna form together and just form a really nice outer shell. Sticking together. Yep. So I have a half a cup of vegetable oil, which I've been heating over medium high heat, and it looks like it's about shimmering, which is what I wanted it to do. Yes. All right, and I'm gonna put four carefully into the skillet. We're gonna cook this for about three minutes on the first side until nice and golden brown. And I'm gonna go around and press it just to make sure that all of the mashed potato cake is in contact with the oil. Contact means brown, perfect. All right, it's been three minutes. So using two spatulas, I am going to flip them carefully. 
Yummy, those look yeah. magnificent. And they're holding their shape. All right, so I'm gonna cook the second side for about two minutes until that side is golden brown as well. Okay, it has been two minutes and I just checked and the bottoms look perfect. So do you mind just holding that paper towel line plate there for me? I will do whatever you want as long as I get a mashed potato cake at the end. Maybe you'll get two. <gasps> so I'm using the paper towels here just to collect any extra grease or oil. Thank you very All much. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is some of the panko breadcrumbs get really dark. So instead of burning my second batch or making them look a little freckled, I'm gonna discard this oil and use fresh oil for the second okay. batch. And for extra insurance, I'm gonna wipe out the skillet with a lot of paper towels here. And because it's non-stick, it comes up really, really easily. All right, nice empty skillet. Now I'm gonna heat this again over medium-high heat with a fresh half cup of vegetable oil. So I'm gonna heat this oil until it's shimmering and I'm gonna cook the second batch of mashed potato cakes for the same amount of time. Three minutes for the first side until golden brown. Flip them with my two spatulas, two minutes on the second side. And then we're close to done? Close to done. Sweet. Yeah. Bridget, the moment is almost here, and I'm excited. Squee! Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it's been three minutes on the first side, two minutes on the second side. All right, I'm gonna transfer the remaining four to this paper towel line plate. Make some room here for Daddy. Oh yeah, and Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I've never made mashed potato cakes that look at anything close to this. They usually, they're so kind of loose. It's more like an actual pancake than right, a cake. Right, right. I'm starving. Uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and you can see here we have some sour cream for a little topping, and you're gonna thank me later for that, I promise. I'm probably gonna thank you now. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to do a big cheers. I would too. <laughs> oh, you hear those crunchy, crispy, Ooh. Definitely, and the inside, really fluffy. Really fluffy. It's like everything I like in a twice-baked potato, but crispy and crunchy on the outside. You nailed it. That is, <laughs> that is perfect because it really does taste like that creamy Kinda interior that, of a twice baked potato. Yeah. And I love that you didn't have to cook anything other than the potatoes. Mm -hmm. So you weren't sauteing onions and garlic and all. Really simple, very smart. Oh, I well, think. Mm. Who needs leftovers? I sure don't because our mashed potato cakes are the best because they're made from scratch. You start with boiled russet potatoes, then to bind the potato filling, mash the spuds with an egg yolk and Parmesan cheese. That Parmesan cheese adds tons of flavor. Shape, then bread the cakes with panko crumbs and fry them in two batches for the ultimate hearty, crunchy coating. So there you have it from Cook's Country, the best recipe for mashed potato cakes. You can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes at cookscountry.com. I'm gonna tear and do the rest of this. Oh, me too, girl. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>